Greetings and welcome to another video tutorial. In this one we're going to go a little bit deeper into scripting and how to do some more fine control on the UI system. So let's start with a problem. I've got my the demo code that we did in the last video, but now I want to add in a second GUI element, a second GUI demo onto the same scene. How do I toggle between these two? thing you have to keep in mind when programming is that code and algorithms and data structures, they're kind of, they're, they're secondary. They're, they're not really the core root of programming. The core of programming is manipulating data. And, you know, the, the code and algorithm and data structures are, of course, very important tools used in manipulating data. But the heart of programming is manipulating data. Anytime you approach a new programming problem, you have to identify, all right, now what is my current data? Is there any new data that I have to create? And how do I want to manipulate this data? So currently, I have a series of GUI draw calls. But I need to be able to easily toggle between one set of GUI draw calls and the other set of GUI draw calls. And well, in programming, when you have got a group of operations that are related to one another, what is one common way of separating them? A function or a method, as it's called in C Sharp. So what I've done is I have refactored the GUI demo code here a little bit. Uh, public bool meep, because when I wrote the variable, I honestly couldn't come up with a better name. Um, I use the input, I check the mouse, which I'll get to in a moment. And then let's take a look now at the public on GUI function here. Notice I pulled out all of the original GUI code and put it into a method called show demo one. And so I've got this toggle here. If meep is set to true, then I will show demo one. Otherwise, I will show demo two, which is empty because that's what I'm going to be showing you guys in this video. And then to do that toggle, I use the input class. Now the input class in Unity is, well, obviously how you get your input. And if you want to check to see which key is being pressed or which combination of keys is being pressed, where is the mouse, what mouse button has been pressed. Uh, if you're working on tablets, this is how you interface with the touch screen for the most part. If it's input related, generally speaking, you're going to be going through the input class. So I'm saying, okay, input dot get mouse button up. You then have to pass in a number for the mouse button. Uh, zero is left. I believe right is one and middle is three, but I would honestly have to look that up to be sure. And then I set meep equal to not meep. Remember our Boolean logic here. Not true equals false. Not false equals true. So with a Boolean, this is a very easy way just sort of to toggle between true and false. You know, meep equals not meep. That way, you know, if it's meep's true, now it becomes false. If it's false, now it becomes true. And anytime you do refactoring, you always want to test. So I'll bring up run the game. And there is one small bug here. This is why you sort of have to really think carefully about what you are doing in that uh, trying to click on any of the buttons doesn't really work all that good. Because as soon as I click on the button, it turns off the uh, the thing. And so, sort of a quick fix to this. Change the button to 1. Now I can left click properly. And if I right click, I can toggle things. Because I wasn't using the right mouse button for anything a uh, unintentional bug, but it shows the importance of carefully thinking about what kind of data you're going to manipulate. Okay, so now we've got the scene set for toggling between different kinds of uh, uh, UI displays here. Now let's think about this problem. It's very common in many applications, not just games, that when you go to take a certain action, you will get a window that pops up that says, are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure you want to quit? Are you sure you want to leave this screen? So on and so forth. And so, you know, having a confirmation window, being able to display a confirmation window, 
and then figuring out um, you know, what, sh what action should I do is very, very helpful. And so to uh, further this, what we're going to do is we're going to have two scenes. And when we hit escape, it's going to bring up a dialog box saying, are you sure you want to switch scenes? If we click on OK, the scene will switch. If we click on cancel, the scene will not switch. Or if we hit escape again, it will close the dialog box. And so that's going to you know, be a fair amount of logic there for setting up the uh, UI. That first things first, let's go ahead and make sure that we've got the scene set up. We've already got this one set up as menu one. And I'm going to go ahead and create a cube. And it looks like where the cube created by default is going to work just fine because I can see it um, in the screen here. I'm going to go ahead and save this scene. I'm going to create a new scene. I thought I told you to save. I'm going to create a new scene, save it, and I'm going to call this menu 2. And I'm going to create a cylinder this time, so that way we've got a, uh, a difference in shapes between these two. And I will go ahead and attach the GUI demo to the main camera again. I am also going to set this starting off to being false for uh, displaying the old project. So save that. Go ahead and go back over to menu 1. Uncheck that. And we're ready to go. Now for the first step on this, let's get the GUI window set up and then we will worry about the additional logic. Now this time we're going to use um, a relative form of assigning our controls. In the last one we did absolutes, you know, X, Y was, you know, specific for every single control, even controls that behaved in a, in a group. This time I'm going to define an area so that way all I have to do is move the initial declaration and then the rest of the values will follow from there. So let's hop back over to the code and get started. Now, in order to set up an area for a GUI area, it's actually called a group technically speaking. I tend to call them areas because I'm not really sure why. I just like calling them areas. But the actual formal name for them is a group. So what I'm going to do here in show demo 2 is I'm going to do a begin group. So I'm going to say GUI dot begin group and it has the standard rectangle position. Now this one is important in that this is the only one that I have to specify absolute. And I'm going to want this centered on the screen, and I'm going to want it to be, say, 200 pixel, 400 pixels wide by 200 pixels tall. So its position is going to be my screen width minus the width that I want for this particular object divided by 2. And my height is going to be screen.height. Ah, if I can type properly, it would help. Minus 200 divided by 2. And of course, my width and height will be 400, 200. Make sure I close out all my parentheses. And so I don't forget, I'm going to go ahead and put a GUI end group in there, because you must have that, otherwise bad things will happen. Now a group is invisible. To show this, I'm just going to put in a quick little uh, GUI label here that I don't actually want. And notice I'm putting this at zero, zero, but that's zero relative to my group. So we've got our label in. We'll hop over to Unity. And, well, there's my Meep. And, well, you can't tell that the Meep, the Meep itself isn't centered because it's centered on the upper left corner of the uh, group that I created. 
But you can see that even though I put the MEEP at zero, zero, it's obviously not at zero, zero absolute. It is at zero, zero relative to the group that it is inside. Now, in order to make this more visible, I'm actually going to put in a box here. So that way I can see this. And again, with the box, I'm going to put it at zero, zero, because I want it to be exactly where this group is. And then the width and height, I will make the same as the uh, group width and height. And I'm not going to give this box a title. And now if I come back to Unity and run it, and turn stats off, you can see now that I've got this box area here, which is excessively large, but it is centered. If I try and shrink it, it stays centered the best it can. Obviously, once I get it so small that uh, it can't fit in there anymore, it's going to start getting cut into. Okay. So that sets up our box. Now let's go ahead and set up some of our labels. So hopping back over here. Again, all of these coordinates are going to be relative to the position inside the group. So I'm going to say GUI.label new rect. And I'm going to make this one uh, 200 pixels wide. So its position is going to be 400 because that's the width of the group minus 200 divided by 2. Yes, I know I could have done that math without the equation. Just wanted to show it. The width is going, that means the top position, well, this is 200 high, and I'm going to have the label 30 pixels tall, divided by 2, and of course, 230. And this is, are you sure you want to quit? Or are you want to, sure you want to change scenes? And that might not be large enough, so let's take a quick hop over to Unity. Yeah, it's not quite large enough. Let's increase that by another 50 pixels. And this is where, if I was actually doing this for, for a game or a project, I would actually want to have these numbers here as variables so that way I can adjust on the fly using the editor instead of having to constantly come back to the code. And so let's see how that works. Yep, are you sure you want to change scenes? And probably uh, reduce that a little bit. Probably to 30. And that'll be the last one. If that doesn't work out, we'll just keep it as is. There we go. That's much closer. You can see now the text looks much more centered. You have to keep in mind, even though you can't see the full label size, you know, if I make this 300 pixels wide, even though you can't see it, it's still going to act like it's 300 pixels wide, so it's going to look like the text is off-center. And so now I need to put in the OK and Cancel. And for these, I'm just going to, uh, well, let's see here. Actually, I will grab this. So we will say, even though we're not going to put in the logic right now, I'm going to say GUI button, new rectangle. Now, obviously, that's not going to work out too hot. So I need to do, see here, this is 30 high, so plus 50. And I've got, ah, that's why, because I forgot to do the new rect. I was like, my parentheses are off here. There we go. 
I don't know how well you can see this in the video, but there's a little uh, gray highlight around the parentheses when I have my cursor over here that shows me what is the matching opening parentheses for this closed parentheses. It's a very useful tool for being able to see whether or not you've uh, messed something up. And actually this does not need to be... Oh, we'll correct that in the later. Oops, and this is going to be 130. Okay, take a look how that looks like. Yeah, it looks like nothing. Let's see here. Could be that it's a little bit too high up, so let's go back. Yep, that was the problem. It's too far down. Oh, because I'm missing the divided by two. Okay. That makes a lot of sense then. There we go. And there's my yes button. And then I need to put in the no button. And for this one, let's see here, this, this button here is 100 wide, and I want this ticking up to 130, so 130 plus 130. And the rest of it should be okay. There we go. Everything's nice and centered up. So I've got, uh, you know, are you sure you want to change scenes? Yes, no. And because I kept everything relative, um, again, well, if I was using variables here, it would probably work out a lot better. But I could take off, you know, 50 pixels from this, and it would work out pretty good. But I'm going to leave it alone, like, like this for the moment. So we've got our setup now. If I can get Unity to come back up, there we go. So we've got our dialog box ready to display. The next step is to see, okay, how are we going to toggle this on and off? And we will put that into the next video since this one's starting to approach the 20 minute mark.